Face Jug live stream. I think I've done one of these before, but uh, we'll be doing another one again today. Uh, let's see. I probably only do one face jug on live stream. Well, maybe one in a in a portion because I'm almost finished with this one. Uh, I was working on this one and I thought, well, I'll I'll start the live stream by finishing up this one and then start a new one and do it from start to finish. And um, not that there's one way to make a face jug either. I'm just going to show you my way. Hopefully, give you some some ideas on on how that can work. Uh, let's see, I'm going to set up my iPad here so I can view the comments. Uh, let me get that set up real quick. Uh, my daughter was using my iPad and there's a bunch of tabs open. So, alright. We're going to do this. Go to here, turn the volume all the way down. And click on that. <clears throat> you got an ad. <laughs> so. All right. Guess it's making me watch the whole ad. So, all right, there we go. We'll put that over here so that I can see the the chat so anyway uh <clears throat> i have been working on some face jugs i made uh four for my last wood firing and within just a uh a uh, couple weeks of unloading the kiln all four of those were gone sold so i thought you know what i need to make some more so this will be the chance to work on these. I made uh, seven jugs the other night. I've already, this is the fourth one I'm putting a face on. And then uh, I have three more to do, but I'll do, like I said, at least one more of these in the live stream. And then we'll go from there, so. Hey, Cynthia, hey, Candy from Canada. Welcome. Let's see, I think I need to get this camera a little closer and a little lower. So, if you'll pardon me again on moving of the camera, I'm going to adjust that. One thing you could, YouTube could do better is they don't really let you see the camera angle before you start. You get to see kind of like a blurred version of it, but you don't get to see a really great camera angle uh, before you start live streaming. There we go. How's that? That's a little better, isn't it? There, hopefully you can see a little better now. <clears throat> and I've had a little bit of congestion either from uh, well, a touch of a cold or allergies. So uh, anyway, I was actually going off of a reference image for this one. Not that I was trying to make that exact face, but one of the things that I would say first uh, in making face jugs is find, find a picture of the kind of face you would like to make and then just study... Uh, where the where the facial what the facial structure study the uh where the where the you know lines are in the face whether they be smile lines or frown lines or whatever they are um and then just kind of go from there so i've been on a, a journey in the last couple years in making face jugs uh of trying to make them happy and smiling uh which i found that was pretty difficult to do because when when somebody smiles, especially somebody older, um, their their face does all kinds of there's there's smile lines everywhere, and trying to catch capture all of those lines is uh, can be difficult. Um, but I just took that on as a challenge because most of the face jugs I've seen are not happy face jugs. A lot of them are ugly or scary, and they're they're kind of that way on purpose. Um, but I wanted to do the opposite. I wanted to make some happy ones and make them that way on purpose. And, uh, like I said, just, it, it has definitely proved to be fairly difficult, but, uh, fun non nonetheless. So. <clears throat> I can zoom in a little bit more from here if you'd like. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Oop, too much. There we go. 
So now what I'm going to actually work on is uh, putting some ears on this guy and then s seeing if there's any other fine details that I might want to add um, to this one. So uh, what I'm going to do for ears... Uh, I pretty much, uh, I do a very minimal indenting uh, on the actual jugs, which you'll see from the start of the next one. Uh, most of it is added on. Uh, so, but what I'm going to do is get two similarly sized clay balls here. Uh, one's a little bit bigger than the other, but I'm okay with that as well. The great thing about, I will say about face jugs is that even in real life, all faces, there's not a single set of faces that are the same so that's a benefit because you don't have to worry about unless you're trying to make a face jug that looks like somebody specifically you don't have to try to make it look any certain way <clears throat> so with these two balls of clay i'm going to make them in a little bit of a teardrop form uh, because the way i view ears is that they the bigger part at the top and they kind of come down for the bottom earlobe obviously uh, some people's ears are much larger much different. Some people have the dangly earlobe. Some people have them where they come down straight to the to the body. What? But you do have to make a left and a right ear because they do look a little different as far as the way they're structured or they're inverse of each other. So that's going to be his left ear. So this one I need to start making the other direction. So I just do it with my other hand as far as pushing my thumb in to make that. There's the flat side, so one is a little bit bigger than the other. And we'll go from there. <clears throat> my dog wants in, but I'm not getting up, so. <laughs> She's like, I know you're live streaming in there. I'd like to say hi, but. But once she comes in, she's going to, like, five minutes later, she'll want back out. So, at least from my experience. Yeah, I, I do give all my face jugs names. Um, either by something that inspires me about them, uh, or just a random silly name. Um... <clears throat> one of the ones I made last time I made a round of face jugs. It reminded me of somebody that I know. It didn't look exactly like them, but it had some, just an essence of the person. So I named it, but I didn't name it exactly the name. I added it and made it, made it a little bit different. Actually, two of the last ones um, were that way. So This is probably one of my favorite tools to use in making face jugs. Um, it's, it's just a wooden tool that is kind of rounded on both ends. Uh, I, don't, I didn't even buy this tool. I got it in a, in a bunch of tools from somebody else, but it has two rounded ends, one a little bit thicker and the other one a little bit thinner on the, the tip of it. Uh, just does a really good job to get in some of those places that you can't get in with your fingers to smooth out pieces. So. <clears throat> All right. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with that one. Uh, I think we'll probably stop there on this one. That way we can start a fresh one for the, uh, for the live stream and go all the way from start to finish. See, somebody let the dog in and she already wants to go out. So as I suspected, it wasn't long. <laughs> uh. All right. Um, hello from central Florida, Florida. Thank you. Yeah, face jugs are fun. Um, there's a lot of tradition behind face jugs in, in pottery for various reasons. Um, but uh, 
yeah, especially, uh, and, and there's other things that have connections to pot, uh, to pottery in, in various ways, but so there you go. There's that one. Maybe you guys can help me name a couple of these before we finish today, but all right, we'll get one of these larger jugs in here. Um, probably need to zoom out just a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> Oops, hit the hit the stand there. Uh how long does this jug set up after before you can start adding the face? Um these I made um 2 days ago. Um, I started putting faces on them yesterday and I had an interruption uh, for some other things that I had to do. So I probably would have done more of them yesterday, but I've kept them covered with plastic. Uh, I think I made them earlier uh, two days ago and then by the end of the day I covered them with plastic and then they sat under plastic for a couple days now. So they need to be a little bit stiff, but not too stiff because if I do want to... Um, uh, do any adjustments like I do push in for the eye sockets and usually for the mouth uh, or behind the behind the mouth um, So they need to be soft enough for, for that as well as when I'm going to add clay um, If I if I'm adding clay and it pushes in the jug too much um, That that can be a problem. So there is some benefit to either making the the jug thicker or to letting them stiffen up a little bit so that they can get to a point. So the only thing I have here for, for um, use on the jugs would be, uh, I have a bowl of water, I have my sponge, a needle tool, and this tool. It's about the only thing that I have that I've used here making these in a bag of extra clay that I have down here to my left. So I don't have a, a reference image for this one. Uh, so I'm just gonna start and just try to make a, uh, just make a just make a happy face. So I'm going to start out by pushing in where the eye, eye sockets are going to be. So I'm just going to do a couple little indentions. The interesting thing about face jugs as well is that you might notice as we do this that for for quite some time during this process, it's not really going to look that good. And then once you add just a couple key features, especially to me, I think adding the nose, which happens quite near the end, um, adds quite a lot of um, character to the face so uh, first thing I'm gonna do is add I'm gonna add clay for for cheeks they're gonna kind of come down on each side underneath the eyes so I'm gonna add those here I'm gonna add eyebrows that will go up above these eye sockets here uh, and then I'm gonna add extra clay for like smile lines all kinds of stuff like that I might try to do another one with that giant mustache that kind of comes across so that one um, great thing about doing that giant mustache is that you don't really have to spend a lot of time on the upper lip, which is kind of kind of nice to be able to, you know, cover that up. I still usually put a lip under there so it gives structure behind the, the uh, mustache. Um, and so I'm going to do that. So maybe I'll come to here and here with the cheeks. So the mouth's going to be about that wide. <clears throat> so anyway, so I'm going to make a couple more... Um, teardrops for the cheeks. I'm going to kind of curve those down. So I want to make uh, kind of a cheek along with the, the smile line or the, uh, the what comes down around your face uh, when you have a big smile, you know, because the, uh, like I said, it's going to look really funky until I get more of the, the, the uh, parts of the face on here. So Yeah, it's definitely leather hard, uh, Pat. Uh, and then the clay out of the bag is just, um, uh, it's its good to have decently soft clay for, for what you're working with. I don't use any slip in this process either. I just add water to the back of the pieces that I'm adding. Uh, and then um, a lot of the blending is done uh, just either with my fingers like this or with that wooden tool that I showed you earlier. Um, course being careful not to trap any air behind any of the pieces that's pretty pretty important so I kind of take the idea of roughing in the, the the structure of the face and then from there adding the details 
Kind of like with the rest of pottery, we have to think about working on the base layer of the piece first. Uh, I guess painters also have to do that. You know, you kind of have to work on the background before you work on the finish. So you kind of have to know a little bit of what you want it to look like finished, but you, and so you have to kind of work backwards from that. You can't start with the top layer of the fine detail. You got to start in the background and then work your way uh, forward from that. I think I put this one a little bit too far out, but that's okay. Like I said a minute ago, the great thing about faces is that they're all different. Nobody's face is perfectly symmetrical. And that's a plus when it comes to making face jugs is that... Also, I'm not trying to be super realistic. I do want to have realism in the sense of proportions and things like that and capturing some of the, uh, some of the aspects of of a face that really make you know, hey, that's a face and he's really happy. You know, those are the things that I'm trying to capture. Um, so when it comes to faces, that's really what I'm, what I'm trying to work on is capturing some of that essence. I don't want to go super cartoonish and I also don't want to go super realistic because um, I want there to be some realism. But if you go super realistic, then it's like, man, you got, you, you know, I'd be spending hours and hours on, on one face. <clears throat> yeah, so just, just from, uh, looking at this at this point, it, it looks pretty funny. And even looking on, on, uh, I normally, you know, looking from the, the third perspective of the, of the camera, it's like, man, that is, uh, does not look like what I would expect it to look like starting out a face, but I've done enough of these that I kind of have a pretty good idea of what I'm, what I'm looking for and what I'm working on. Like I said, a lot of what I'm doing is based on faces that I have studied, and so that's kind of where I get a lot of my, uh, I just will study a face and then, and then from there just take some liberties in, in adding certain features that I think will make it more fun or more interesting. Um, I mainly use the water for smoothing like this. I, I usually, when I first put a piece of clay on, I'm, I don't want a lot of water because I want to be able to drag some of that clay uh, where I want it and uh, and be able to stretch it out and, and kind of smooth it in. And then once, the, once I get the general structure, then I can use the water to really smooth in later. And then I also use this tool later. You'll notice that I, I use it to get the real fine smile lines and all that kind of stuff as well. So, all right, there's, there's some cheeks that are, that are pretty good there. Uh, let's, I'm going to pull those up just a little bit in here. You could also look in the mirror and study your own face. That's another option of just different things. Just studying the structure of faces in general will help if you ever decide to make a face jug. Oh, sorry, there's a lot of comments over there and I'm not even paying attention. <clears throat> uh, oh, so want to see you do the nose. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's the, the nose is like near the end. So if you have to go, the nose is go not gonna be done until like, it's like really probably the last piece I put on before I start doing fine detail. Uh, well, maybe the mustache will be the, but that's kind of fine detail stuff. Um, let's see, sorry, I missed some of those comments. Um, want to see Bosch do the nose. Whoops, uh, once you see you do the news, gotcha. <laughs> um, hey, uh, Luis from BC, Canada. Uh, or is that Luis? Sorry, Louise. Sorry, there we go. Um, I've done face mugs. Love the idea of using a mug. Yeah, the uh, Linda, the, the face mugs, the, the hardest thing about face mugs is that you're working on such a smaller palette that doing some of the fine details gets really difficult on a mug. Um, so I've done a few mugs as well. I, I prefer doing jugs rather than mugs um, just because the palette is much larger um, to work on. All right, so now I'm adding clay that will become the, 
the eyebrows. Sometimes when I get ready to roll out a little bit of clay, I'll add some water to it and put that in my hands so that I can add some moisture to the clay while I'm forming it. You might see me do that as well. Like I said, now I'm gonna take those edges and just smooth those down before I add much water. All these jugs that I'm making here will also be wood fired and the wood firing number 11, which will be coming up in June. If any of you don't know, I'm having an online sale right now from wood fire number 10. So if you want to check any of that stuff out, it's on my website, uh, matthewkellypottery.com. So all those pots that are on there will be listed for a few more days. Then anything that doesn't sell, I'll remove from my online. I only do the online sales periodically. And then whatever doesn't sell, I just uh, take down from the website, put back on the shelf. We do have a wood-fired event going on in Seagrove in June. So anything that doesn't sell online, will I'll keep in stock until then, the first weekend in June. Because um, we'll be wood-firing in June, but it'll be after that event. So, All right, so now I have some eyebrows and some cheeks. Now I'm going to go um, above the eyebrows and put some smile lines up there. Hey, Daryl. Sorry, right. I think that was a few minutes ago, but good to, good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Uh, adding the whole face. Um, Candy, I can usually do a face jug in about 45 minutes. That's probably if I'm not talking about it. So this one may take a little longer, but if I'm just sitting here just working on a face, I can usually do one in about 45 minutes. <laughs> Sally. <laughs> He's going to be like, why are you staring at me? You can just say, well, because I love you. Just wanted to look at you. And he's not going to know that you're studying a man's, you know, smile lines and wrinkles. and. Or if you want to mess with him, you just say, well, I just, uh, I wanted to study an old grumpy man's face. <laughs> oh, Luis, you're welcome. Louise. Sorry, I keep saying Luis. Louise. Yeah, you should make a face jug. They're, they're fun. Yeah, uh, Daryl, allergies. Yeah, it's settling down a little bit. I think it was also a touch of a cold, but I think it was a combination of the two. Um, definitely feeling better, but man, it's, yeah. You live in North Carolina, Daryl. You know all about it. <laughs> Certain time of the year, allergies, man, it's just like, it gets crazy around here. All the pollen just invades. But without the pollen, we wouldn't have all the things growing, which we also love, so. <laughs> Good job, Sally. <laughs> now, if he was listening the whole time as well, then then we just gave away, you know, your sweetness. Like he's like, you're just saying that because he told you to say it. But if he's not listening, then you just earn some good brownie points. Or maybe you did anyways. It doesn't doesn't take much to. Uh, 
doesn't take much to uh, to make most men feel loved. A little bit of attention. We're like kids, you know. Hey, Robin, you're welcome. In Georgia. I have a good friend who's a potter in Georgia. He's in uh, Watkinsville. Now I'm just adding extra clay for, for additional smile lines and, and wrinkles in the face from somebody smiling really big. It's going to add all these extra smile lines. So, ah, you have on earbuds at a doctor's office. Oof. Well, I hate you having to be at a doctor's office, but. I've spent more than my share of time at a dentist's office in the last year and a half and still have more to go, but most major stuff I've ever had done and not fun, but Yeah, Robin, yep. And Joe. Yeah, Joe Joe Calloway. He's he's uh done quite a lot. Uh I think he's one of those that when I first started going to Georgia, uh met him. He said he learned most of what he learned uh, about making pots or or learned as much on YouTube as he did from stuff in person. And I, I thought that was pretty cool. Like I said, just roughing all this in and, you know, I can, I can work on adjusting some of this later or, or, uh, carve into it and make them more, make some more of these lines defined later. You'll see, uh, I'll come back to some of these spots that I'm making now. And like I said, a lot of these I'm just doing from memory from past faces. And I know I'm like, okay, I like that kind of line there. I like that kind of line there kind of thing. So. That's part of what I'm doing here. So the more <clears throat> the more you make them, the more you'll figure out things that you really like. Um, like I said, this one is going to have that giant mustache. Um, Another thing that uh, that I'll sell you that I think is a big benefit is I uh, definitely like to do, uh, the reason I do a lot of these things in the stages I am is because I've figured out that that's the best, uh, as far as order to do them in. I'm gonna move my water so that I can reach for it in a different spot. Keep a towel on the back of my chair also to help. I need to clean my hands off. Uh, which clay body do you use? This, um, Louise, this is a, a, a clay from my wood kiln from Starworks. This is called uh, Oka Medium. Well, actually, this is kind of my reclaim. So this is a blend of probably like four or six clay, four, out of four to six clays. Uh, but most of it should be, you know, Oka Medium. So... Um, uh, I've made uh, face jugs out of cone six clay, so I, I think it should be fine. Um, uh, do you ever add hair onto the face jugs, like uh, head of hair, not just face jugs? No, I don't normally add uh, hair on top of the head because it just gets... 
there's not much space up there to do it. And I just don't, it's, it's kind of easier not to, is another thing. Uh, a lot of people have asked me about doing females. I don't really do women because if I make a face jug of a, of a man's face and I make it old and ugly and, you know, rough, then it's not offensive. If I think if I made a face jug of a woman that was ugly, that wouldn't be too flattering. So, um, Uh, let's see. I missed the first part. Can I watch the whole thing later? Yes. Um, uh, all this will be posted to YouTube later. So you can go back and watch the whole thing from the start. All right. Let's see. Now I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do the eyes. I've been doing a lot of the, the really smiley ones with closed eyes because you'll see a lot of people if they're if they're smiling really hard, they kind of throw their head back and they got their eyes closed and they're smiling really big. So <clears throat> also it's, it's pretty difficult to make eyeballs, um, uh, make those look kind of realistic. So that's another benefit. If I do the eyes closed, I still like to do a little bit of structure behind the eyes, um, for like the, the, what I, the eye would be behind there so that it gives some structure behind the eyelids. So I roll out a couple little balls to to make the eyeballs out of, even though they're they're not going to be seen. I like to have the structure behind the eyelids. So get two that are pretty similarly sized here, and then I'm going to flatten those out. It's going to kind of look funny sitting in there, but just getting a. I see. Sally showed up to promote her YouTube channel. <laughs> Just picking. Uh, it doesn't bother me at all. Oh. All right. For the uh, eyelids, uh, just had to mess with you. Sally's been here a long time. Since the, uh, since before wood firing number one. I know that. All right, for the eyelids, I'm also going to, pretty much everything starts out as like a ball or a teardrop, one of the two, so. So, I'm going to make two um, similarly, similarly sized balls here. <laughs> uh I just like messing with people, Sally. It's fun. Yeah, it's an, another guy that used to um, uh, be in my uh, live streams all the time because I remember chatting back and forth with him, and I can't remember where he's from now, but his name is Mickle. He he started a YouTube channel, and he does some really good videos, the little bit that I've seen. So, um, so what I do with these, um, I try to make them a little bit oval because I'm going to be making both a top and bottom eyelids out of this, but I want to flatten it out. So I just make that ball and then I push it, flatten it out on my bat that I've got here that the pot's sitting on. And then I lift that up to move it to a new spot. So I've got a flattened out oval there. I'll do the other one. I don't like to leave it in the same spot because I don't want it to stick too bad when I go to cut it in half. So then I'm going to take that oval. I'm going to just take my needle tool and just cut that right in half. I could just put a solid piece on there and then use my needle tool to draw the line. But I've found that I really like this look better, putting it on as two separate pieces. Um, so that's what I do. So I get this half, you know, half of an oval. And then I'm just going to put that over the top half of the eye. This is where this tool that I was talking about comes in really handy. Because in order to smooth that, instead of using my finger, 
I'm going to take this tool in there, just get it slightly damp, and then use it to rough in the the smooth the uh, top part of that. And then I'm going to get water on my finger and go back over that and smooth that in. All right. So then I'm going to take the bottom half. Yeah. Phone on do not disturb. That might be a thing to do. There we go. All right. Hope you guys are back. I had a phone call. How about adding a big wart on his nose? Yeah, I add, I add, uh, I add moles and things like that to them. So, all right. So now I've made the uh, bottom half of the eyelid, and I'm just gonna butt that up against it, like that right there. And you can kind of see why I like making them in two pieces because I would never be able to make it look that natural of a separation if I made it in one piece and then and then drew that line. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with the bottom, come back and use this wooden tool to kinda of attach it. All right, there we go. So yeah, so what I'm doing before I put it on is I just take that uh, and, uh, piece and I kind of round the edges a little bit where I've cut with the needle tool so that I can get more of like a, so it doesn't look quite as like sharply cut uh, and then lay that up there. Another thing is I wouldn't be worried about getting in the way of the camera if I wasn't doing a live stream and that would make it a little easier too because I keep on thinking of how I can show you what I'm doing and not have my hand or the tool in the way, but it's only so much of that that I can do without being in the way of the camera. All right, now adding the bottom eyelid again. Just kind of set it up against it. Now, I don't want to mess with that line right there a whole lot. I just want to get it on there and then. And I will have to come back where the edges are, and I'll draw some smile lines and kind of carry that. I'll use this wooden tool to kind of carry that. Uh, uh, the line of where the eyes closed on into the smile lines and such. So the also the advantage of me trying to make old kind of old men with really big smiles is that you get lots of wrinkles and smile lines. And so you get more of a rough texture anyway to the face, which kind of like, I don't have to worry so much about making like a perfectly like smooth, even surface. So there we go. Now we have cheeks, eyebrows, smile lines, two eyes that are closed. And now from here, normally what I do is do the, uh, do the mouth. So I'm going to do the upper lip and the bottom lip, but I, I'm also, after I put the nose on, I'm going to come back with a big, a giant mustache uh, in that area. So not too worried about the top lip, uh, but I do want to have it under there for the structure. So kind of like the eyeballs in, underneath the closed eyes. It kind of gives structure so that 
those eyes are not just sunken in. You can kind of even see from the side there that the eyeballs have, uh, you know, they're sticking out like ours do. Like if you close your eyes, it's still bumped. It's still raised, you know, raised up where your eye is behind your eyelid. So. All right. So for the mouth, I definitely want like, you know, it's, it's one thing I've realized that, that a lot of facial structure is different than what I perceive it to be like, you know, so the nose kind of goes like the top of the nose kind of goes kind of right in between the eyes there all the way down to like kind of down here. A lot of times your, your smile lines of your cheeks go up and connect kind of behind where your nostrils are. So they need to be in this, this kind of area here, the bottom of your nose, like here. So that's where about the bottom of the nose needs to be. Top of the nose being like right up here somewhere, uh, right in between the eyebrows. And then, so the lip actually needs to go across maybe right down here somewhere. Um, and then the mustache is gonna be in that area there as well. So, and I want the, you know, the face smiling a bit, so. All right, Dr. Go Doctor calls Sally. All right, well, you can watch it later or I might be here when you get done. So we'll see. <laughs> Looks like a cheech, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a face to study. That'd be a good one there, yeah. Cheech Marin, he's got some expression in his face for sure. All right, so for the top lip, I'm making a long you know, skinny piece, that's a bit too much, I think. Let me take some off each end, but I want it to taper on each end, so I just kind of roll it between my hands to get, um, it's still longer than I need, so, uh, let's see. But as I said, this one I'm not too worried about, although I still want to give it the, kind of the look. I, I like to pinch down and do that little middle part of the lip there. Uh, I kind of squeeze together and pinch down to make the, the point in the upper lip and then kind of come down and then I want to curl these up on the end. So I'm making a happy, you know, smiley face there. Sometimes I also like to push it down on the bat so it gets a flat side to the back side, which helps me attach it to the jug. Can also then pick that back up and where this flat side is, I can add just a little bit of water to that whole back side that will help it stick. So I'm going to put that right down here. Let's see, let me do it right there. Kind of ends over here, right inside the smile lines of the, the cheeks. And now, like I said, this still needs to be attached, although most of it's gonna be covered by the mustache. I want to attach the top side of this. Probably shouldn't have pushed this in so much right in this area. Um, I may even go back and add some clay. Now, if I wasn't doing a mustache, I definitely this this area here where I've pushed in, I pushed in a little bit too much. And so that would be a little problem. Not, not unfixable, but just like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. So I'm just gonna add uh, like a, a piece of clay here to bring that structure out of that a little bit. Once you, uh, also, once you've pushed in an area of the, of the wall of the pot, it, it starts to get weaker. So the more you mess with an area that's been pushed in, the weaker it gets. So just something to think about. You kind of, once you have to, once you push in an area, it kind of, you're, you're making it more pliable and it kind of gets a little bit weaker. So you have to be careful about that. All right. So there's that bottom lip or I mean top lip, sorry. All right, now I do want to make the bottom lip. Like I said, I'm not worried about too much about how that looks because it is going to be covered by a giant mustache. All right. All right, so the bottom lip is going to go all the way across like that so and i do want it to kind of taper from end to end as well 
and be a little bit fatter in the middle as most of our lips are fatter in the middle and taper. Men a lot of times have less expressive lips, of course, than women do, but there's certain areas of a face I like to exaggerate, one especially being the nose. Uh, ears are another fun one to exaggerate. Let's see, we want to go, you know, something like that right there. And we're also going to do this one like I did the top one, where I'm going to push it down on the back to get a flat side to it. Howdy, watching from Stanwood, Washington. Is he created after someone you know or just an imaginary compilation of people you've seen? Uh, have I ever made one after someone, uh, designed after someone I know? I, I, I am actually tasked to do that. I've never done that yet, really, so that's going to be a bit of a challenge, but, um, yeah, I'm supposed to be making one of somebody that I know, but this one is just, I've studied uh, a lot of just random faces, uh, Parley, uh, let's see, and he, and he is laughing, yeah, that's, that's the, that's the goal, yep. Savage, thank you. Yeah, well, I'll, I should have, if I make seven, <laughs> I should maybe have one available in an online sale in the future. That would be nice. I don't think I've ever done that, but let's see. All right, here we go. Let me get that. And then outside edge, I'm just going to pull down to... Patch. I know one thing about my wood-fired clay that I don't like is that I have a tendency that the clay cracks in the corner of the mouth um, doesn't dry nearly as well. The gas-fired clay that I use uh, does a lot better job of not cracking in those spots. Um, I try to just add a good amount of water in those areas um, so that it maybe will help and dry them slow. So sometimes I add teeth behind them, you know, uh, lips, all kinds of stuff. But for now, we're just doing the mouth. So there we go. Like I said, it looks kind of funny at this point because without the nose and all that, it, it really has. Uh, you know, I've got some more design to do, uh, smile lines around the eyes and all that, but uh, um, now is the point where I would add the nose. And so like I said, the nose is gonna go from about here to about here. So you gotta make that, and then I just make a, a big teardrop and then I make the nostrils after I add the clay. So. Well, Savage, if you're here in person, you definitely would get first dibs, but uh, online, you'll have to take your chances. <laughs> now, my online sales, I do give first dibs to my patrons. That's not necessarily a plug for you to become a patron, but um, I have a, patr a patron uh, Patreon account um, where people sign up to support me monthly because um, YouTube and Instagram don't really pay a whole lot. So that's why I created that. So. so I am making a teardrop about the size that it needs to be for a nose like that. And I will push that down on the bat as well to kind of form that. I like making pretty big noses kind of exaggerating it a little bit from what they really are in real life. And I just leave the bottom pretty bulky. And I, like I said, I'm going to use my finger to make the nostrils uh, after I put this, attach this to the jug. All 
All right, so here's the shape that I have from the side and from the front. You can see now it's flattened on the back side. I'm just going to add a little bit of water and then lay this up on here. Yep, it's a little bit longer than it needs to be, but that's okay too. So you can kind of see once I add the nose on there, it takes, it's like the face totally changes, like starting to really look like a person. So I'm going to smooth that at the top. I'm going to take this tool as I've been doing and start smoothing in these areas right here. Be careful not to push too far over that I get into the area where the, where the eyes are as far as messing up the, the slit in the eye. So go back with water. Oh, Sharon. Uh, I'm glad uh, glad you have one, and I hope you enjoy it. I drank out of one of my mugs this morning. <laughs> uh, let's see. All right. Now, arguably one of the funnest parts of making a face jug is sticking my finger in its nose to make the nostrils. <laughs> Awesome, Daryl. That's really cool. All right. So normally, what I do for the face, uh, for the for the nostrils, is now I just take that large portion, and I just like to take one of my fingers and and just push in on one side and 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 smooth it out, and then uh, and then I'll go to the other side, and and so I like to hold the nose kind of like up here on the bridge, so that I'm not mashing the whole thing, because and, and I just stick my finger in here and and just push pretty aggressively and then and then kind of smear that back so that's what i get from the the first one there and i go to the other side and kind of do the same thing it's hard to get this on camera but especially with my arm in the way but Yeah, it's definitely indented a little bit more than I need it to be right there. Kind of did that earlier, planning on the, the mouth, but, uh, but like I said, that will be covered up by the mustache, so that's a big plus for this one. And while you're making one, if you weren't planning for a mustache and you get in a position like this, you'd be like, hey, I can just cover that up with a mustache and kind of solves one of my problems. All right, so now after doing the nostrils, another thing I like to do is come to the top side of the nose and really work on where the nostril connects to the main part. I like to kind of dig in with my tool. If you can see, and, and, uh, and kind of right in here and then dig some of that clay away right there on the top side of the nostril. So that's what I did on that side. Then on this side, do the same thing, just Just kind of helps define the top side of the nostril there. All 
<clears throat> All right, Pat. You could have left the second nostril, and it would have been a coolish, wonky nose. <laughs> yep. Speaking of nostrils, I need to get up and blow my nose real quick, so give me just a second, and I will be right back. All right, there are nostrils. Let's go on the bottom side of this and try to define that a little bit as well. There we go. Just kind of get some separation from the cheek and the nostril a little bit there. Use a little tip of the sponge there. There, that helped a lot. Smooth that out. I think this side's separated pretty well. All right, uh, before I add the mustache, I'm gonna go ahead and do some smile lines, deep grooves around the, the mouth here. Oh, this is live. Yes, it is. We're here. And now you are too. <clears throat> All right. Um, I'm going to take my the rounded part of this tool and just kind of dig in and draw some really kind of deep smile lines. Some of this is going to be covered up a little bit by the mustache, but still... What what will show it will it uh, what does show that is not covered by the mustache it'll still be nice to have kind of some deep some really deep smile lines here that kind of extend on the bottom side of the cheek there going around the around the corner of the mouth so I need to get those in before I do the All right, let's uh Let's make and add the mustache, and then we'll go back and do all the fine lines, do the eyebrows and all that. All right, just grabbed a chunk of clay. I'm going to add a little bit of water to my fingers while I kind of roll this out. All right, so I'm making, I definitely have too much here, but. All right. I'm going to add a, a pretty much like a big flat piece here. I'm going to shape it uh, before I add it. So I'm going to make it so that it kind of comes down underneath the nose there. So I want it like that. Comes to kind of a point on each end like that, and then also comes up in the middle. On each, uh, or comes up in the middle. So it kind of has the... Like 
this in and bring this in a little bit. Something like that right there. A big old Mario mustache. There we go. Some of this I'm going to go ahead and texture before I put it on. And then I'll texture the other parts once I get it up there. A handlebar mustache. There you go. A moustache. A mustache. Uh, the main part I want to texture before I get it on would be like this bottom side. Um, Cause I don't want just, I don't want it to look like it's just a, you know, I know I started out with a solid piece like this, but I don't necessarily want it to retain the look of, you know, just being a big solid piece of clay, you know, to some degree. I mean, it's, it's, there's no way around it completely, but I want to rough up this edge. I'm just using the skinnier portion of this, uh, uh, wooden tool I have here. And then as well on the top side, some of the top side is going to be used to like attach to the face. Um, but these outside edges won't be. All right, so I got the, the edges kind of done there before I apply it. Um, that'll help me a little bit. Then I'm going to stick it on here. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty big mustache. <laughs> but that's all right. I'm going to push that on right in there. And it sticks way out over his cheeks. I'm going to bend these back a little bit too just to kind of give them. And then I'm just going to use that same part of the tool and I'm going to start the good thing is like I said attaching this I'm kind of using the top part of the mustache and pushing the clay back and that helps it attach as well as textures texturizes the that part of the mustache there Probably going to just curve this around and so it touches because if it sticks off the face, there's a chance it'd get broken way more easily. So as much as I'd have a lot, love to have it just kind of sticking out in the air, it may not be worth it versus having it kind of curling around his cheeks there to, to have something to stick to a little bit, at least the ends of it there. Yeah, I still don't like that in, in way, big indention right there. I might be able to go back under here and push it up a little bit. But 
definitely pushed in a little bit too much right there. But. Oh, and then I messed up my bottom lip doing that. That one's not too hard to fix. All right. Now you can see the smile lines that I did beforehand. I, I, I carved. Now there's a continuous line that goes from there down around. Even though it goes behind the mustache, it's good that I did that beforehand. All right. Now I'm going to come back and add some more of the... Probably should have done some of these extended smile lines out here as well. But we can just continue them. Yeah, that would have been a good one to do before the mustache, but. Now, around the eyes is always tricky because um, the smile line from underneath the eyes kind of goes around here and then kind of connects over to where it comes down around the face. And so I like to dig in there and kind of curve around to there. Sometimes it's good to have your sponge just to clean off the end of the tool like this. There's a good smile line under that eye. Let's go to this side. There's a good one under that eye. Gonna do the top of the eye there. And then of course at the corners of the eyes we've got like small crow's feet. Yeah, this one here looks really nice, like coming off of the eye here and going right into that smile line. Do I have one on that side? No, but I can I can make one. No bushy eyebrows? No, not yet. I will get to the eyebrows in a second. A lot of times I just take the clay that I made earlier and turn those into eyebrows, but I can make them bushier. It might not be a bad idea. And then on the inside of the eye, I like to kind of connect that kind of up to the nose and
smile lines that come off the inside of the eye kind of connect up and do like a big some really deep smile lines off the top of the nose up into the eyebrows All right, let's see. Also, it looks like there's a nice little groove right in here, so I'm gonna accentuate that a little bit. And top of the cheek, under that other one. Maybe a couple more around the mouth here. All right, eyebrows, let's see. We want to make them bushier, I can do that. Might lose some of the smile lines by doing that, but that's all right. We'll... Uh, let's see, um, sorry, I didn't see. <clears throat> Thank you, Tracy. Oh, good man. We're I missed a whole lot. I've been just going at it. Uh, Seth, yes, this is a self-portrait. Thank you very much for noticing. <laughs> David, hey. Uh, coworker said you need to do one of you, David. Yeah, that that you you would be a good candidate. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna add some extra clay on top of the existing eyebrow that was there to make them even bushier. Normally I just dig into the clay that I made the eyebrows with. See, y'all are helping out here. So somebody said bushy eyebrows and now we have bushy eyebrows. Imagine if Bob Ross had live streaming. Not that he needed it, but he'd have had all kinds of requests. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Daryl. Appreciate it. <laughs> Candy, yeah, that's good. Do you add a chin or no? Normally, I don't add chins. Um, of course, on a real person, the chin like sticks out actually farther than the mouth, and so to add all that really gets funky. I just kind of let it fade. Sometimes I'll do a little bit of a um, goatee or something down there, but 
lot of times I don't add shins. I might add a little bit of one to a few here and there, but not much just because it... There has to be some liberties too that like, you know, because the shape of this jug is not the shape of your head. So, you know, that's that's the the kind of one of the challenges or the, uh, what am I trying to think? Limitations to putting a face on a jug is the jug is not necessarily the shape of your head. So I'm trying to work with the jug, but also make it look a little bit realistic. You can also like push clay through like a wire screen to get like really like, you know, hair or if I've done, I've, I more looks like bushes than it does like hair, but I've done that before when I've made like cabin jugs, um, do a scene with that and, and push clay through a screen to get. All right. Now we're going to do ears. He definitely looks happy, doesn't he? That's good. <laughs> a big mole on the nose if I'm doing bushy eyebrows. Oh, I got gotcha. you. We need we need some big ears, don't we? Like, cause you know, it's like guys get older and their ears get giant. All right, started out the live stream doing the ears on the last one. So we'll do a couple more finishing touches before we finish, but making a couple teardrops here so I can make the ears. And then I just, just a, a loose interpretation of an ear, but um, because there's, structure on the face that comes out over the ear as well, but I'm, I'm not going to do all that. I'm just trying to get a general structure of an ear. Got that big lobe up on top and then the, the lower part there and get a flat spot here where I can attach it to the face. Oh yeah, big old ears for this old guy. Man, that is a big ear, isn't it? I think that's going to be much bigger than the second one I make over here. <laughs> Maybe not much bigger, but... That's definitely some grandpa ears, isn't it? get older your ears get bigger but you can't hear nearly as well so with big ears will his name be Otis I don't know Sam the bartender on Gunsmoke sadly I've never seen Gunsmoke but I can check that out. But, you know, I, I don't ever try to make it look like anybody specifically, but, you know, naming it Sam, you know, we'll see. Yeah, I've, I've done some Otis's before. I did uh, one that reminded me of Otis from Andy Griffith, so I named it Otis. Yeah, some of my favorite characters from Andy Griffith are definitely Barney and probably Otis. Barney, number one. I think Don Knotts was a, a great actor. Definitely missed.
If y'all have never seen the movie Pr The Private Eyes, you should go check it out. Don Knotts and Tim Conway. Filmed right here in North Carolina at the Biltmore Estate. I d it's hard to find, though, because, well, somebody might have put it online, but it was, like, out of production. You couldn't buy it or rent it or anything, but somebody might have put it online somewhere. Probably, like, from the 80s. All right, if he's that old and hairy, we got to put hair in his ears. How's that? All right, there's that. Let's see. All right, we need a mole on the nose, right? Just make a little ball, get one flat side, a little bit of spit on it. Makes it attach really well. You were hoping for hair in his ears. All right, Renee. Well, you got it. We got to do another mole. That's one's not enough for this guy. Balance it out. We'll put the other one over here on his cheek. I've done one with a fly on his nose before. That was fun. <clears throat> All right, let's see here. I mean, that's, that's not, I mean, that's pretty much complete. I don't see much else that I'd really want to do to it. Um, maybe we'll work on naming all the face jugs later. Maybe we'll do a post of all of them once I get done and <clears throat> we can name them all. Give some people the opportunity to help name them. Yeah, I think having the, the, the mustache curl around there, although I'd l rather have it sticking off, I think it's gonna be safer that way. Uh, let's see, let's, let's move that up there. <clears throat> we could here let's give him let's give him a little bit of a chin down there just a little bit of one do you leave the ear ears plain no lines or crevices yeah i don't really do a lot of uh, lines in the ears so much more of the attention is focused on the face so see what we got here. I don't normally do chins, so it's kind of different, but if we just add some extra clay down here and then try to
Oh yeah, that that helped it. Yeah, that helped it a lot. Yeah, I definitely like that chin. I might have to do the rest of them with chins now. <laughs> I got two more to do after this. I'll definitely do some more chins. All right, well, there we go. Man, that's a fun one right there. I'm glad that's the one that was done on a live stream. I probably will put handles on all of them as well. So I should have had these covered up, but I, I kind of, I'll show you the rest of them here before we leave. phone out of the holder here all right so there's the one we just did here's another one I did this morning I really like this one that was one from yesterday oh here let me zoom out oh, a little bit here's one of the first ones I did with the that was got a little bit of a chin but I like the new chin a lot better that one I tried with his eyes open Definitely don't like it as much as the ones with the eyes closed, but looks a little creepy where these actually look funny. Honestly, that might be my favorite one. Between that one and, and this one, I like his tooth. <laughs> so. All right, let's see here. All right, everybody. Thank you for being here and uh supporting in every way that you do don't forget that uh if you're interested in anything from Woodfire number 10 all that stuff is on my website now uh only for a couple more days and then i'll remove all that stuff and put it back on the shelf there is a blind bag sale for some mugs so you can get a little bit of a discount off of the normal price of mugs but you don't get to pick which one you're going to get um there's a lot of mugs on there there's pitchers planters uh utensil holders jars several different things on there um, so yeah, uh, uh, I'll probably do a post later about naming some of these. So we'll, uh, uh, but, uh, but anyway, um, thank you guys and, uh, appreciate all your support. And, uh, like I said, if you're interested in the stuff, it's on my website, matthewkellypottery.com and, uh, appreciate all your support on YouTube, Instagram. If you don't follow me on either one of those, make sure you do. And we'll see you all soon. All right. You guys have a great day. Bye.